uh, Lewis, thank you very much for making time. And uh, we've we've been interacting, I guess, for about seven years now, maybe more. Eight or nine, maybe. Eight or nine. Yeah. Gosh, time yeah. flies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've been actually a, a big figure, not just in open source law, but also around areas like uh, open data. So you've you've been through a whole gamut of openness. Uh, to get the ball rolling, I'd just like to ask you, what, what brought you into this field? You know, I, uh, I first was exposed to free software in college when, uh, this was before the term open source had actually been coined, and uh, a friend of mine, his computer monitor was blank, and I said, well, what, you know, what's wrong with your computer? Why won't it turn on? He says, oh, it is turned on. It's running this new operating system called Linux. And uh, I can't get it to do anything, uh, but it's made by these people on the internet. <laughs> and, and we were both computer science majors, I was also a political science major, and the idea that people had self-organized on the internet to create something as complex uh, as an operating system, even though it was an operating system that didn't appear to work at the time, uh, was just this really, um, just really caught me interest, right? The idea that we have these traditional forms of human organization and here we're sort of shortcutting it and uh, you know, just doing it in a different way was just really interesting to me. So I installed Linux a few months later. I uh, worked on my first project, which was a uh, open source Lego operating system for the Lego Mindstorms platform. You know, long story short, I ended up at a, at a Linux startup. When we got acquired, I was working with their attorneys. And I thought, oh, this is cool. I could, I could do this. And uh, so after I left the startup, I, I took a night school class at a local law school. And I uh, was like, yes, yes, I can do this. Applied to law school, and 10 years later, here I am. So you're one of the lawyer engineers. That's right. That's right. I mean, I couldn't write a line of code these days to save my life. But, uh, you know, I still have some of the concepts, which I think has been really key for my career, because it's helped me... Uh, speak to the engineers and understand the complex nuance that sometimes, you know, even if I'm not writing the code myself anymore, I still bring that background that really helps helps shortcut a lot of discussions, right? It's always really nice to be able to to sit down with confidence in a meeting that might take another attorney two hours, takes me 30 minutes because I don't need the basic concepts explained, right? Uh, this is a nice plus. That makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, in your time in the field, let's say the last, wow, more than a decade, more than a decade, uh, what's been the most interesting thing you've seen around open source law? You know, I think the biggest change, uh, I think the most interesting and, and perhaps still underappreciated change is we went from a space where the license was the primary, not just the primary, really the sole uh, framing documents. Uh, to a world where other, a lot of other things uh, have a role, right? So the CLA was always sort of there, but not that important. But now we've got a ton of foundations that really have a structural and constitutional role that uh, I don't think any of us really anticipated. I mean, I was on the board of directors of one of the first open source foundations, uh, the Gnome Foundation, before I became a lawyer. But, you know, we thought of that as sort of a... That, that was not nearly as central as the foundations are today. So I think that shift is really, uh, it's still underappreciated. And I think it's really changing a lot of how we do things. And that's an interesting point, too. I, I, I must admit that perhaps I didn't appreciate it enough myself. It's something I need to think about. Yeah. yeah. And uh, moving ahead, you know, looking forward, next 12, 24 months, is there something that you think we should keep our eyes open for? You know, I think. Um, I think machine learning is changing so much about how our industry works. Um, and to see that as, uh, interestingly, as a technology that in many cases has actually been open first because the academic background of so many of the participants means a lot of code has been opened up very quickly that might in previous years have been held as sort of company proprietary, company confidential for many years um, instead you're seeing organizations like Google, Yahoo, Facebook, all open sourcing parts of their uh, parts of their machine learning stack, and I think that's really just uh, you know it's changing the whole industry. And because 
open source permeates the whole industry these days. Open source is going to change with it. It's going to raise huge questions uh, of open source access to computational power, open source access to data sets. How are those going to influence the ability of uh, individual contributors, uh, smaller companies to participate? I think that's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Thank you so much for your time, Lewis. Hey, my pleasure, Shane. Uh, always good to talk to you.